This portion of the video is sponsored by URCDKey. URCDKey is an online web store that offers software keys and game keys in a very competitive price and without the hassle of going to a physical store. One of the most frequently used software keys is none other than a Windows 10 key and you can get a legit one from URCDKey for only 17 US dollars. But since you're awesome, you can also use my code BL20 to get an additional 20% off and get it for only 13 US dollars or around 700 pesos. You can purchase using your Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and more. And once you get your key, they also have an instruction on how you can activate your software. So check the link below and don't forget to use our code for an extra discount. Thanks to URCD Key for sponsoring this part of the video. Hi Brawlies, Marvin here from TechBeerall.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy B-rolls. And today we have another build video for you guys. And this one is for a friend of mine who wants to have a decent gaming PC that he can also use for programming, web development, photo editing, and other productivity tasks for a budget of around 1400 US dollars or 70,000 pesos. In this video, I'll provide you guys with my build experience, synthetic benchmarks, gaming performance, thermal performance, and of course, power draw, so that you can have an idea about all those information should you decide to follow the same build. With that being said, let's get into it. Alright guys, full disclaimer, even though this entire build is around 70,000 pesos, you can actually build a similar one for less, like around 60,000 pesos, with minor adjustments on the components. Speaking of components, let's check out all the different components for this build. For our motherboard, we're going to use the popular and reliable MSI B450 Tomahawk Max, and since this is the newer Max version, it is already compatible with the Ryzen 3000 processors. It also has a better BIOS chip which in theory should allow for future BIOS update compatibility. This new Max version can also support memory speeds of up to DDR4-4133 and features a stealthy black aesthetics compared to the silver heat sinks of the older Tomahawk. Other than that, we still have everything the B450 Tomahawk has to offer. For the processor, we went for the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 with 6 cores and 12 threads and with a base clock of 3.6 GHz and a boost clock of 4.2 GHz. This should provide us with a decent mid-range performance for both single-core and multi-core workloads for gaming and productivity work. Now, we got both the Ryzen 5 3600 and the B450 Tomahawk Max as a bundle for around 16,595 pesos. Now, for the memory, we decided to go for the reliable G-Skill Trident Z Neo 3600MHz kit, which is specifically made for Ryzen, so we shouldn't encounter any compatibility issues with this, especially that we're also using a third-gen Ryzen processor. Now, initially, our plan is to just use a 16GB kit, but my friend who actually owns this build decided to add a 16GB kit. That's why our total budget went from around 60,000 plus to 70,000 pesos. Next, for storage, we have a standard Western Digital Blue 7200 RPM 1TB hard drive for our large files. And for our boot drive, we went for the Bang for the Buck Adata XPG SX8200 Pro 512GB for a total of 6,550. Now for the graphics card, since we're rocking an MSI motherboard, my friend decided to go for the MSI Gaming RTX 2060 Super. Now for a 70,000 budget PC build, this might not be the most powerful graphics card you can get for the budget, but it is decent enough for 1080p ultra settings on most modern games. And if you want to go for something like a 2070 or 2070 Super, you can probably adjust other components like the NVMe or RAM kit or push your budget a little bit more. But yeah, this should provide us with decent gaming performance nonetheless, as we will see later on our benchmarks. Next, for our power supply, this is completely subjective, but we decided to go overkill with this one, with the Seasonic Focus Gold 850 watts, because as I always say, you shouldn't cheap out for your power supply, as you will probably use this for a very long time. With that being said, should you prioritize your graphics card, you can probably go for the 620 watts for a slight reduction on price. Now for the chassis, we went for the Techware Alpha TG because first of all, it features a mesh front that is always good for airflow and the design of this is actually pretty nice and simple for just around 2,350 pesos. Now it's kinda hard to grab this one right now and we actually got this from the province from Burma Tech Zone as well as some of the other components for this build. For the case fans, even though the Techware Alpha TG comes with pre-installed fans, we decided to go for the ID Cooling DF12025 ARGB version and even though the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max doesn't have any ARGB header, we still decided to go for this as the ARGB version of the DF12025 is actually brighter than the standard RGB version as per my previous reviews of these case fans. Another thing is that the included remote controller of the case fans has more and better lighting effects compared to what MSI Mystic Light can offer, so yeah. 
And to partner all that, we decided to go for the ID Cooling SE234 ARGB air cooler to cool our AMD Ryzen 5 3600. And it's actually quite decent as I'll show you guys later on our thermal benchmarks. And that's about it for all the components for this build. I'll pop the complete specifications on the screen as well as their price and where we got them so that you can check it out. Like I said, you can probably tweak it depending on your budget and your priorities. You don't necessarily have to follow the exact same specifications. Alright guys, with all the components introduction out of the way, let's finally build this, shall we? Alright, so building inside the Techware Alpha TG for the most part is actually quite easy, especially when it comes to cable management. It has substantial spacing at the back and a ton of cable type points that you can utilize. I actually only had two problems with it. One is that only one extra standoffs was able to fit on the motherboard tray. The rest have bigger threads. Another thing that I had difficulty with is installing the case fans. The screw holes of the fans are super tight and you really have to put an effort to secure them properly. Other than that, the overall build experience is actually pretty easy. Alright, so now that we're done with the build experience, let's talk about the performance. Now, full disclaimer, the comparison data on our benchmarks here are quite scattered because I used my old testings as our comparisons. But unfortunately, since one of my hard drive that has my raw files died on me recently, some of the data are gone. So I just had to use what I have left. With that said, these benchmarks are still valid and quite useful. So let's get into it. Alright, so I'll be comparing our new build to my two previous builds and I'll pop their complete specifications on the screen so that you can have a better understanding of our comparisons. I will also show on the screen my benchmarking methodology so that you can have an idea of how I came up with my results because that is also quite important. Alright, so let's start with synthetic benchmarks. In Cinebench R15, the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 is pretty much on par with the 3700X in terms of single core performance but falls behind as expected when it comes to multi-core performance, but is still pretty decent with a score of 1581. Now in Cinebench R20, just about the same story, almost on par in single-core performance and lags behind on multi-core performance with a good score of 3605. Now in Geekbench, which is a popular multi-platform benchmark that is also available in Android devices, for CPU, the 3600 was able to score decently, especially comparing it with the 2600X, with a single-core score of 1,240 and a multi-core score of 7,389. In terms of GPU score in Geekbench, the MSI Gaming RTX 2060 Super was able to score 87,176 but unfortunately, I don't have a comparison data for this. Now, in Blender's built-in BMW benchmark, our new build right here with a 3600 processor and a 2060 Super graphics card was able to perform decently well and as expected, in between our old ATX build with a 2600X and a 1070 and my current mini ATX build with a 3700X and a 2070 Super. Now, here's the rest of the synthetic benchmarks especially in 3D Mark.
Alright guys, now let's check out the performance of our new build for gaming. And again, unfortunately, since my hard drive with all my games died on me, I was only able to test our build in 4 games, but at least they are all quite popular right now, so yeah. Starting with CSGO, and as you can see, weirdly enough, our new build was able to outperform my current mini ITX build, but I always get weird results in CSGO, so this is not new for me. Nevertheless, our new build is certainly capable in CSGO, even at maximum settings at 1080p resolution, so you can pretty much game on this in high refresh rate up to 240Hz at 1080p. Now, in GTA 5, which is a very popular game right now since it recently became free via Epic Games, we finally have our expected results here with my current mini ITX build outperforming our new build right here. With that said, even at maximum settings, our new build is capable at more than 100fps in GTA 5. Now, in Rainbow Six Siege, which is a very popular esports title right now that is easy to drive, our new build can easily go more than 200fps on this game at ultra settings and in 1080p resolution. And lastly, for the game that I'm currently addicted to, in Call of Duty Warzone, our new build is capable up to an average of 187.67fps in very high settings at 1080p resolution. Overall, there's no doubt that our new build right here with an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 and an RTX 2060 Super partnered with 32GB of 3600MHz RAM is certainly capable for maximum settings at 1080p resolution at any game that we throw at it. And with proper tweaking on the settings, I believe that you can still play decently well with this in 1440p resolution. Now, let's talk about thermals and power draw, which is equally important. In terms of the power draw of our MSI Gaming RTX 2060 Super, it is relatively efficient especially if you compare it with the older generation Zotac 1070 Mini, and as expected, of course, our ASUS ROG 6 2070 Super with a triple fan is the highest in terms of power draw, but of course, it is also the most powerful card right here. Now, in terms of the CPU power draw, with a TDP of 65 watts, the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 is drawing only 22.23 watts on idle, with a maximum power draw of 63 watts with both core performance boost and precision boost overdrive enabled. Now, I also tested the entire system, especially now that we have a proper external watt meter device, and in idle, our new system only draws around 84.86 watts, which is significantly lower compared to my current mini ITX build that has an idle power of 128.18 watts. Now, during load, our new build draws a maximum power of 289.52 watts, which is way below what our overkill power supply can provide. So essentially, we have plenty of room for component upgrades later down the line, especially if we decide to upgrade our graphics card. And lastly, for thermals, the ID Cooling SE234 ARGB actually did a good job for our AMD Ryzen 5 3600 with an ideal temperature of 37.1, an average temperature of 48.5, and a maximum temperature of only 63.3 in the entire 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra benchmark in our room with an ambient temperature of 28.9. As for our real-world scenario during gaming in Call of Duty Warzone, with an ambient temperature of 30.3, our idle temperature is 41.5 with an average of 59.6 and maximum of only around 70.8. So as you can see, even with a tasking game like Call of Duty Warzone, our new PC build right here with 6 ID cooling DF1205 case fans and an ID cooling SE234 ARGB air cooler inside a mesh techware Alpha TG is pretty cool in both thermal performance and of course aesthetics. So to conclude, I honestly think that our finished build right here has a good balance when it comes to components except probably for our overkill power supply. We have a decent and fast NVMe boot drive with the XPG SX8200 Pro partnered with an adequate 1TB of hard drive for our large files. The combination of MSI B450 Tomahawk, MSI Gaming RTX 2060 Super, AMD Ryzen 5 3600, and the G-Skill Trident Z Neo 3600MHz 32GB RAM should provide us with decent performance for both gaming and productivity at 1080p resolution and probably for 1440p as well. And with a 32GB of RAM, you can probably multitask for days with this build. By the way, like I said, you don't necessarily have to follow the exact build. You can tweak it, change some of the components to match your needs and your budget. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to my friend Daniel for allowing me to build this PC. I don't usually do this, but it was certainly a fun experience. You can check the links below for all the components that we used in this build. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss our future videos. Have a great day guys, you're awesome!